Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren and today we are talking about how to use Astro Dice. So I'm gonna talk about how you can read them individually and as a whole. And I've even got a printout that you are going to be able to download and use so that as you're moving forward and trying to get practice, you have something you can take with you. So if you are new here, I am a psychic development coach. Um, I'm a psychic, I'm a medium, and I here on my channel kind of teach you guys a bunch of exercises. I also teach you guys how to work with tools as well. So if you really enjoy psychic development and learning all these tools and how to grow your psychic abilities, go ahead and subscribe, and I hope that you like all the content on my channel. All right, now a quick word about the Astro Dice. It's another tool. You guys know how I feel about tools. They can be great, they can be awesome, but don't let them become a crutch. If you realize you are using them more than your own psychic ability, that's when you wanna put them away for some time, rely again on your clairs, and then you can come back to them. Now, when I first saw Astro Dice, I think I saw them on Gem Goddess's channel, and I was like, what? I have to get those. <laughs> And when I was learning, I could not find any videos online. Like I found people describing what the dice were, but not how to read them as a whole. And so I have played with them for a long time. I've learned a little bit about astrology. I am not an expert, I'm learning, but I feel like I know enough to give you guys the tools on how to start using them. Including this handy little sheet that you can print out. You can download it in the description down below um, and use this um, if you want. Print it out now, follow along with the video and take some notes. All right, so when should we even pull out astrology dice? Honestly, I think you can use it to get any additional information when you're kind of looking into, hey, what's the energy here? And you'll kind of see as we play this out how it can answer kind of hopefully any question that you might ask. I think it's also a great tool if you want to learn astrology. So if you want to start learning the different houses, the different signs, the uh, different planets, and then you know how they all work together. I think it's great as a learning tool for starting to get kind of the astrology stuff down in your brain, if that's something you want to learn. I've seen them often in pick a card readings to maybe describe the energy of what's going on, the energy of a person. You can also use it just to ask, hey, what's the energy going to be like today? What do I need to know about today? I don't necessarily think it's a good mediumship tool because it's not like a Ouija board. I don't feel like it takes the place of like what someone like an animal or a spirit might like be trying to say. Not saying that you can't try. I mean, absolutely feel free to try. Just kind of trying to give you a general, when should you use this? I've also seen them used where one person just rolls the sign dice to maybe get a sign of somebody like, oh, my next, you know, this person that I'm looking for, what is their sun sign? What's their moon sign? What's their rising sign? I've also seen them being used to actually like figure out dates to things. So you're like, hey, when should I go on my next vacation? You can roll the sign dice and you know, these signs correspond to different months in the year. So maybe if you roll Pisces, it's gonna be mid-March to mid-February or opposite, <laughs> mid-February to mid-March. So there's a lot of different ways that you can read them individually, but mostly in this video, I'm going to be talking about how you can read them as a whole, because that's what I could not like find anywhere. All in all, just make sure that you're asking questions the right way. I have a whole video on that. You know, whenever you're asking any sort of intuitive question, if you're being too vague, or if you're not being clear, or you're asking it in a way that doesn't make for a good answer, that could kind of get in your way of your readings. All right, so let's go over what you're gonna get when you buy a dice set. And I will link some of my favorites down below. And you're gonna get three different dice. One is for the planets, one is for the signs, and the last one is for the 12 houses. So these are all 12-sided dies, so that means there are 12 options on each. So let's talk about planets first. So these planets are kind of like the major ones that are in everyone's birth charts, their natal charts, that kind of impact us supposedly in big ways. And as they move, they affect not only your energy, but the energy of everybody that's on Earth. So one of the things that I have on this sheet is I've got all of the planets all of the signs and all of the houses. So if you don't have the planets memorized, which I certainly didn't when I first started, you can print this out. So you can just look at all the symbols here. You can look at the symbols on the dice and you can find kind of the general wording of what that planet might be about. So for example, if we roll Jupiter, that 
planet is the planet of like growth, expansion, and luck. So depending on your question, that might be part of the answer. So if you're asking like, hey, what do I need to know about this job that's coming up? Maybe it's a very fortuitous thing. Maybe you're gonna grow and expand. You're gonna learn a whole lot. Now, the reason why I'm encouraging you to print out your own is because I want you to change mine. You know, my idea of what Jupiter is might be different than yours. Or as you start to work with these planets and start keeping track of them, I highly recommend the um, Moonology Diaries. Um, you might feel like, you know what, Jupiter is way more about the luck side of it than the growth or expansion side for me. Or maybe it's something completely different. And I think you have to change this as you go along. And I've constantly been changing this as I've learned more. Um, and I will update it on my website. But just know that this is not permanent. This is not set in stone. This is just one person's opinion about what these planets, house signs all mean. Now, the astrology dice that is for the signs, um, this one again, 12 signs. These are probably the ones you're most familiar with. We got like Capricorn, Aries, Taurus, Virgo. And these basically reflect all of the signs in your chart, maybe in other people's charts. This could represent kind of a time period, birthdays. Overall, it's kind of like the personalities. You know, when we talk about, oh, I'm a Virgo, oh, I'm a Taurus, you know, usually we're doing that to describe like our personality to somebody else. So if I'm reading somebody and I'm asking, oh, Oh, you know like what is your dog's personality like and I roll this and we get Pisces Pisces to me is very mystical it's very intuitive so maybe you know that's kind of describing that dog maybe they're a mystical intuitive very crown chakra sort of animal and the opposite way goes if I want to know like hey when should I think about moving when's a good time to move and I roll it okay and I got Leo right yes Leo and I think that's uh, mid-July to mid-August, I think, yeah. Um, so mid-July, mid-August, maybe that's when I should be moving. And that's again why I didn't encourage you to write on this because I don't have the actual dates on here, but you can go ahead and do that if that's really important or relevant to you. Now the houses, so this is the only actually like numbered die. And this one is all about like, what are the stories? What are the transitions or events that are happening in your life? And in theory, you go from one to 12, one being like birth, you know, ego and 12th being like death and moving on to the next chapter of your life and all of these different numbers or these houses kind of represent like different kind of major things that you might have happen in your life and I'll give you a good analogy for um, houses here in a second but basically just know that everyone has houses in different places so um, basically that's based on your rising sign um, so wherever your rising sign is that's your first house now putting it all together this can be the tricky part but as long as you kind of remember these analogies and maybe even stick to the piece of paper that I got for a while it'll help um, and I found this this from asking a bunch of people who know about astrology how do these relate like if I'm throwing these out like how do I know which one to start with how does it affect the other one um, and I love this analogy so planets the planets are what is happening what that energy is what is being expressed whereas the signs are how it's being expressed like how is that coming out how is that playing out and the houses are where it shows up in your life. Like, what are we talking about? Are we talking about your home? Are we talking about your relationships? Where is this happening? So I kind of made these little sheets so that we can chat about this and make it easier as we're going through this video. So again, the what is the planets, the how is the signs, and the houses are the where. Now this analogy I think is even more helpful to remember. Um, and that is that the planets are like the characters. Those are the people that we're talking about. And the signs are what those people are wearing, what those characters are wearing. Because when you put on a different outfit, you're different, you know, you express yourself differently. And then the houses are like the stages or the areas that this is like played out or where this is lived out in their life. So again, what type of energy we're talking about how that energy is showing up and where it's showing up now again I've got this all written out on this sheet so I've got the the how what in regards to where um, so that you can basically just like <laughs> plug and play as you're using this guide. So I'm gonna do three examples for you guys right now and kind of walk you through how I would interpret it. And then I'm gonna leave one practice one for you to do and leave in the comments down below. Let's start. I'm gonna roll and we went ahead and rolled Mercury, 
in Capricorn in the third house. Now, using this handy guide, even if you wanna like write it out step by step, you can. And so we've got Mercury and I have thinking thoughts. In Capricorn, you know, describing Capricorns, maybe they're very like responsible signs is how you see them. So we've got like thinking energy, that's like the what, the we're talking about thinking and thoughts and mental activity. And then as far as, you know, how this energy is expressed, how's this mental energy coming through? It's coming through very responsibly. So we're being very responsible with our thinking. Um, and then we have the where. So where are we needing responsible thinking in our life? And that's in the third house, which is the house of communication. So depending on what question you ask, which I didn't ask a question, maybe what you need to know is that when it comes to communicating with others in your life, you really need to think about how to mentally communicate a lot better and come at it from a very responsible place. So we're talking about being responsible with our communication with others. And that's the example that I have here on this sheet. So if you need to see it a little bit more in writing, it's totally here, but let's do another one. Roll again. And then we have Saturn in Aquarius in the eighth house. All right, so using my handy little sheet again, Saturn is all about learning. So education, learning, that's what we're talking about here, the energy and how that's being expressed. What outfit is that energy wearing? We're gonna go to Aquarius and Aquarius on this sheet um, is innovation. And again, like if you have a different idea of what an Aquarius is, maybe you are an Aquarius, like change that word. What is one word that you would describe um, an Aquarius person to be. Um, but let's go with innovative for the sake of this video. So we've got um, innovative learning is kind of how I would look at that. Okay, we're being innovative with our learning. Whereas if this was wearing a different outfit, let's say this was Leo instead, which is like courageous. That would be courageous learning versus innovative learning. Well, they could be similar in some ways, but there's a different energy that you've got going on there. So we're talking about learning in an innovative or new way. Maybe something's not working. We need to try something out new with this learning. Um, but what are we talking about? Where is this at? Is this in regards to school? Is this in regards to family relationships? Um, and the eighth house is death and letting go. So this could be literal, maybe you're, I don't know, going through losing somebody in your family, or honestly, I see this as like moving into a new chapter and letting go of like what is no longer serving you. So if that's the case, you know, where can we have innovative learning in regards to letting go of some of the things that no longer serve us? Maybe that's the, the answer to this question. So maybe that's saying, hey, you, maybe there's not, you don't have all the right tools at hand. Maybe get creative with how you're approaching learning about letting go. Maybe there's something that you haven't explored, like tapping or something. And that's a place that you can try to use that to let go and move on to the next chapter of your life. Now let's do one one last example. I hope these are making sense. All right, and we've got the sun in Leo in the fourth house. Now the sun is all about kind of your identity, who you are, like I am this. Um, this is also like ego. Now Leo, we just went over this, is all about like courage. That would be one way to describe a Leo. It, it could also be, um, <laughs> what's the word? very prideful um, or very like attention grabby. That's where you have to look at these and go with what resonates with you because your idea of a Leo might be totally different than my idea of a Leo, but that's what's happening is your guides are trying to communicate through this tool and you have to understand that they're, they're wanting to communicate a certain thing based on how you view that sign that planet, that house. So I would read this as like courageous identity, being courageful, courageful, <laughs> being courageous in who you are as a person. And then where are we talking about? Like, do we need to be courageous at school? Do we need to be courageous with, I don't know, like pursuing a relationship? Um, and so that's where we look at the house. Um, and we have the fourth house, which is home and family. So being courageous and being like authentically yourself at home and around family, that, I mean, you can kind of get a clear picture there. Maybe we're not being very like who we are authentically trying to be in front of our friends and our family. 
Now, for example, if we change the, the house, you know, and let's say that this was about reputation and career, you know, you could easily say that, hey, I need to be more courageous about who I am in my career. Or if I want to have more reputation or a good reputation, this is what I kind of need to embody energy wise. Now, the eventual point is that you shouldn't have to like use this. I mean, I'm still using it because I do not have all of these memorized, but again, change it as you go along, make it your own, make it your idea of what it is. Eventually you're gonna be able to roll this and be like, oh, that planet, I know what that means. Oh, that sign, totally know what that means. Oh, that house, got that memorized. And then it'll be more about piecing it together and again, trusting your own gut. Because if you're not trusting your gut with this, you could be missing even more information that's coming through. That's why I always say with tools, if it's not making sense, Go to your clairs first, get, you know, get that information from your guides first, and then use this as a supplement. Now, I wanna give you guys some practice, and I will say in my most recent pick a card video, I went ahead and did some astrology rolls and left it in the corner, uh, the top left corner of each of those piles. So go in there, choose a pile. There's gonna be a message for you anyway about how to trust your intuition more. And then while you're watching it, go ahead and look at that astrology dice, use this, thing to get even more information about you and how you need to trust your intuition. And let me know in the comments of that video how you interpreted the Astro Dice. And that's a place for you to practice right now even if you don't have a set of dice. So I'm gonna let you guys practice right now. I want you to tell me, I'm gonna ask the question, <laughs> what do I need to know most right now? And I'm gonna roll this and I want you to tell me how you would interpret this. L Lauren, what does Lauren need to know right now? And if for some reason you can't read it, I have Neptune in Libra in the ninth house. That's a big one to try to, <laughs> to decode. Let me know what you guys think. <laughs> also, my Psychic Development Facebook group is a place for you to practice. If you want, you can leave a post up that says, hey, I wanna practice reading with the Astro Dice. Can you leave me questions in the comments below? And then what you can do is roll Astro Dice for different people answering their questions and you can get a ton of practice that way. That's what that group is made for. And like I say, with every single tool here on my channel, remember you guys to trust your intuition first. Don't be so rigid on the interpretations. If you're getting something very clairaudiently or clairvoyantly, like go with that, They're, your guides are probably giving you that additional information to work it out. There's been several times where I've read this and like I know what you know Pisces is but I was getting a very uh, singular perspective of like a, a certain part of a Pisces because of the additional information I was receiving. So it might not have been normally how I would have read that dice but it still absolutely made sense. Alrighty, you guys, I hope that this video was helpful. Let me know if this worked for you and leave any questions that you have in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye. So first, when should we be using Astrodice? I don't know, when should we? If you like content where you're taught how to grow your psychic abilities, I guess subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> that was weak. And I roll it and I get um, Aries. Right? Nope. Mars. Oh, I'm rolling the wrong dice. No, I'm not. <laughs> is that the what? No, I can't even struggle bus. My hair's so staticky.